in Madarasha, devil enter you. It's like there's only so much in Soviet Russia jokes you can make. Yeah, no, it's not, not, not my best. Not my best. <laughs> Work what I got. Uh, so, hi, everyone. Uh, we This was one you recommended to me. Uh, this is Sputnik, which is a Russian movie that combines Alien and Venom on, in, a kind of weird, in a kind of weird fashion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and a little bit of E.T. Um, <laughs> it was led by the Soviets. And a little bit of the movie Life, I think. A little bit of Life, yeah. Mm. Although I never really saw it. I never saw that one, did we? Mm. You didn't? No, because when I was in theaters, we never actually got around to watching it. Mm. Okay, yeah, I remember I streamed that one. I mean, I know how it ends. But yeah. <laughs> we never sat down and reviewed it, but... Yeah. Anyway, so uh, what did you think about this movie? Mm. Um, It was decent. I think it was much more psychological than i expected it's a slow burn it is um i'm not um, sure the payoff really like makes the bur the slow burn worth it necessarily <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm gonna have to agree on that one i think i also may have set my expectations a little bit too high <laughs> but um like i enjoyed it it was it was interesting seeing kind of like how everything kind of evolved no, like there are some interesting parts to it. I'm always a sucker for like monster movies. So yeah. like, I'm always like the design of the monster is really good. Yeah, it's it was um, interesting how it had like a mix of different things. Like there, it, it's it had a little bit of the tentacle monster from uh, the mist, had a bit of clover of uh, slusho from Cloverfield. Is that what they call him? Um, yeah, his, his name's Slusho. Of course it is. Right. <laughs> uh, there is a reason for that. I'm um, sure. Had, I mean, I know the backstory of the Cloverfield. Yeah. Monster. Um, a little bit of like King Cobra, a little bit of uh, or, I, if I want to go really like old school, vague, obscure, I can go like Ogre from Godzilla 2000. Um, I remember nothing about that movie except I was not a fan. Uh, I just remember you, it kind of ended. I was like, what the hell? That's how it ends. <laughs> as the Godzilla aficionado in the group, I know all the monsters by name. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oh, right. I also remember the other guy just like it ends with the guy screaming Godzilla before he just gets like stomped or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Godzilla destroys everything in the credits roll. I was I like, about that part. Yeah. Huh. That was, uh, that was not the payoff I was waiting for. I mean, the Godzilla franchise in general, with a few exceptions, is not exactly known for its high class filmmaking. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, but we're going off topic. So yeah, um, so there's a little bit of that in there. It's it's a cool looking little design. I liked. I that was probably my favorite part of the movie. Uh, for those who know nothing about this movie, like I did going into it, this movie is basically about uh that takes place in the 1980s, like 83, 83, during the communist uh, communist Soviet Union, uh, where two cosmonauts go landing back on Earth, run into an alien on the way back, and crash lands on Earth. One of the one of the people dies and the other one goes into this military facility where a young uh, psychologist is brought in to de like help along with it and then discover some parts about like turns out that's I guess slight spoiler uh, <laughs> the man is a host to an alien that goes in and out um, and that's the basic crux of the story yeah. um, and the rest of it kind of ebbs and flows from there uh, as far as like tone and themes I'm not 100% sure what this movie was going for um um, I'm not sure. I wasn't too sure either. I think it was that, like, th thematically speaking, it was all about the whole idea of, like, like, selfishness and, like, what, you know, the idea of heroism. And I think as well as, uh, it felt like there was some, um, critique of media news within Russia, possibly. I'm not too sure. A little bit, but I, I can't say though. Being I mean, there, there are, there are lots of things where. Huh. Sorry, yeah, because I mean, just there are lots of things where we talk about the whole idea of like secrecy and just. I mean, then again, it's we get plenty of movies like these over here too. So who am I to speak? It's every time you get a little, uh, you get the um, you know, like secret black ops base. It's always going to be about secrecy. So what the hell yeah. am I talking about? I mean, it's more like. <laughs> For us not coming from Russia and this being a very Russian film, I, I don't know really if I feel comfortable trying to imply any 
meaning into this in terms of Russian politics. I know fuck all about Russian politics, except yeah. that apparently they know about, about American politics. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sorry, I don't, I can't speak as far as that. But I do see what you're saying about like the hero thing and like, what does it mean to be a hero? Are you just, like, it comes as that Bojack Horseman episode early on in the very first season. It's like, are you a hero just because you're in the army or are you still just an asshole with a gun? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this is the interesting thing, that whole idea of... They had some interesting um, characters in terms of like how they morally rationalized everything. Because um, mm-hmm. main character was obviously a case of do whatever it takes to save someone. Because like right off the bat, they mentioned how she nearly drowned someone somehow trying to like save them from something that was apparently a misdiagnosis. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wait, why would a psychiatrist do this? I mean, uh, well, psychiatrist is a little different than psych, uh, psychologists are a bit different. Yeah. Um, psychologists can prescribe drugs that actually considered like a medical doctor um, yeah. because they have medical train. A psychiatrist has no medical training and just uh, does not quite have that same level of experience and cannot prescribe drugs or administer medical treatment of any kind. Yeah. Um, so I can see, and I don't know how, again, I don't know how Russian psychologists work, but it's like you are allowed as a psychologist to run some medical, uh, some medical procedures. So yeah, but um, anyway, he uh, she gets approached by Russian Giancarlo Esposito, who we also both kind of thought initially, hey, it's Russian Michael Keaton. Yeah, a little bit. Initially. <laughs> 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 Where she is taking to uh, Russian Ron Livingston from Office Space. <laughs> um, Although not, I, now I'm imagining uh, like the American version of this movie, if that role was played by Michael Keaton. <laughs> oh, God, that'd be great. This be him like just slightly tweaking his role from robocop yeah yeah she's <laughs> <laughs> like do that michael keen look like look we all have weapons here in america we're america land of the proud and the brave we gotta have we control these things come on yeah. <laughs> but anyway so um <laughs> So oh, yeah. my best attempt at Michael Keaton. I don't know how well I pulled off, but <laughs> um, I can't say. Um, but yeah, so um, she's brought to this hidden base to kind of oversee this cosmonaut, uh, since other one was missing a good chunk of his brain, yeah, and not alive. <laughs> and that's, and that's a big problem. Yeah, it's the thing where they find out. Yeah, there's like this alien inside him that they're trying to figure out. It's like if it's a parasite or a symbiote. Um, and it's interesting seeing how they kind of play th- play things through in terms of like trying to, um, like determine how ha- you know how this thing functions and just constantly trying to find a way to push the main characters' buttons mm-hmm, to push yeah. the creatures' buttons, which is actually pretty ge- uh, smart. The way that this also is a good way um, to like properly build up exposition because one of the things I was told was exposition is kind of like a loaded gun. <laughs> Where if you want if you want to use it, you got to use it to find a way to like further the like further the plot, not just stop dead to explain something. Exposition's a trip is tricky as hell. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, and so they did a pretty good job of actually managing it here in a way that made sense. No, I agree. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, a lot of the character work and the way the actors worked up, like, like there's no bad performances in this movie. Um, mm-hmm. And I think the way, like the writing in terms of how they interact with each other is very sharp and is very to the point and knows how to get the reaction it wants out. It, like, I would say like everything up to the climax is actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, like the character work is solid. You understand where everyone's coming from. There's a lot of moral ambiguity. Um, some kind of ob- like ob- subjective moral issues with what they kind of choose to do with the guy, the cosmonaut towards the end. Yeah. Whereas, like, is this really a good idea? Is it really a good idea? Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, and but it really, it's really kind of the climax where it's like, okay, this is where you could have done a lot more with it. And I'm feeling like budgetary constraints kind of came into it. Yeah, because I'm checking. It basically has the equivalents of 2.6 mil US. Okay, that makes a lot of sense because like the the design of the monster and the way it like interacts and actually like looks really good. It does. I was impressed. Like, yeah. Jesus well, Christ, tell, I've like, seen okay. like I've seen multi-million dollar movies that just like look like the creatures look like crap in comparison. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there's also a lot more going on on screen, so it's kind of give and take. That's true, yeah. 
Um, so the like, design and the way it interacts with everything looks great. You can tell that where the limitations kind of came in towards the very end uh, when they actually have to have the monster do stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Where it's kind of like, oh, shit. Uh, going back to Godzilla movies, is like, okay, it looks great watching it stand there. We actually have to watch it punch something. It's a little awkward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, like, I think it's really kind of move. I don't want to say falls apart. just doesn't quite deliver on what it was been setting up. Yeah. Um, um, but the characters kind of making increasingly questionable choices. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got the reason why they were doing what they were doing as well, for the most part. That whole idea of, you know, they're trying to separate the thing so it could be a case of, like, trying to get the guy away from this thing as far as they could. So the thing would die him, but then they kind of find out, nope, they bonded and they can't be separated. Yeah, but it's also that is like, mm, yeah, but this guy's also very aware of how many people he's killed. So that kind of goes on the culpability thing. Yeah, I think oh, that was another case of to be fair. I don't think they were trying to release that thing when they were supposed to, because you could tell um, main girl was Tatiana was a little excuse me hesitant but it was kind of a case of well we're gonna die if we don't so <laughs> i guess uh yeah for, for me it's more like yeah but if that's a case like you gotta roll the dice on that if you're wrong everyone's in deep shit <laughs> yeah. yeah but um yeah i mean i don't really have a whole lot to say on this movie it's yeah. a well-made film like cinematography yeah. is gorgeous um yeah um they did a good job of like keeping things dark, but not like murky. Like you could still tell what all was going on. Oh, well, the more I think about it, the more I was like, wait, there's kind of a few points in the movie where they kind of bring stuff up and then they just leave it behind. Like early on in the movie is the part where uh, Tatiana starts kind of running, like doing her, mor- her morning run. And she gets stopped by like one Russian who uh, like one Russian shoulder, who, like grabs her like really hard. And then someone else is like, pull her off. Like, but that, that was, oh, that was one anywhere. of the prisoners. That was one of the prisoners actually. Oh, was it? Was yeah. It supposed to be? Okay. Yeah, I completely missed that. <laughs> yeah, you could tell by the clothes you're wearing. So I thought it was supposed to be one of the inmates. And I think there was a double reason they did that. It was a case of showing, okay, some of these are probably fucked up people that deserve to die, but then seeing the other one kind of intervene for no reason at all. I mean, I think it's supposed to give some sympathy because I could be wrong, but I think Never those two were prop. I think those are the two soldiers we see in the feeding cage or the two uh, inmates. I don't know. I. I'd have I'll to watch it again. It, but. I'd have to watch it again. Um, but I'm pr- from what I remember, I'm pretty sure that's who they were. I'll take your word for it. I don't. Yeah. I wasn't really like. I didn't recognize his face enough because they're wearing masks. But um, I don't know why I said it like that. I'm a little tired. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, that is true though. It's like it's it's kind of hard to tell when they're all wearing masks. Yeah, but like when they kind of get demasked, it's a little bit easier to tell yeah um but um yeah like i said i don't have a whole lot about this movie to say other than like for what it was for the cheapo foreign um foreign russian film like i enjoyed it i had a i like i would say like despite the fact the climax is a bit anticlimactic and i feel like could done more with it uh, towards the end especially when they have like the cool set up and of course that's probably all of the monster movies like oh cool monster's gonna kill a bunch of people right now and it does but largely off screen uh, yeah which uh, again that's not entirely their fault they, they cleared it the best they could with the budget they had and, and for the most part it works yeah um everything i can think of like that'd be wrong with it just be kind of nitpicks but otherwise it just feels like yeah it was good not great not as much as i would like it but i still worth watching mm. yeah it's, it's definitely worth at least one watch like it was kind of on the lower side of de- decent for me. I'd say kind of a six, maybe, maybe a seven, but um, give it a solid seven for me. Yeah. yeah I, I think it, it's, it is a mix of just like, I probably had to reorient myself before watching it. And also to be fair, there were some things that were a little bit harder to follow than I realized, like the whole deal with um, there are these flashbacks involving a child that I thought it was supposed to be. Um, Cause one of the subplots is the mate is the cosmonaut that came back is, it kind of gets revealed that he apparently dumped his son that he didn't know, know like at an orphanage or he just didn't go pick him up from Mm -hmm, it. Yeah. And the whole deal is to showcase this idea of like perception of heroism. 
Mm. You know, once again, kind of time time back what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. And it was, you know, really good stuff. Uh, so we thought that this kid that we saw was the son. Mm. And then it's like, at first we thought, oh, no, they, they just thought it was a boy. He actually had a daughter. I mean, Joe's like, man, you are a terrible father. Yeah. <laughs> and then we re- then I realized later, it's like, oh, no, those were uh, the uh, Tatiana's flashbacks. Yeah, I don't really know what that adds to the overall narrative, I guess. Uh... I think it was... As far as I tell, it was just that whole idea of like them trying like so damn much to like try and accomplish whatever their goals are. I don't know. It, right. it, um, as well as maybe tie into why she felt she took that whole thing with the kid so personally. As opposed to, you know, trying not to let a kid die. I feel like that's motivation enough, but that's just me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't like well, that. Well, now you bring that up, and that's a case where, like, yeah, that was a case where, like, they didn't really do enough with that for it to have, like, a major impact on the events of the film. Like, there's only, I want to say, like, three, four flashback scenes, and they're all that's, like, about under a minute, give or take. Yeah, there was three, I think, because first one involved them, like, walking and trying to get a key, and they get caught by, you know, the nun running, running the, one of the nuns running the orphanage. Second thing involves them trying to get to a box, and they fall um and the third thing is the person finally gives him the gives in the box turns like a pair of shoes and the thing is that as a kid they weren't exactly the most most mobile like they could walk but um i guess there's like some kind of weird spinal thing that they were dealing with because mm, yeah. you can because i pointed that, that out like scar yeah yeah because i remember i pointed because i mentioned that and it was like that there's one point you very clearly see a spinal scar on her mm-hmm, yeah um and so that so that was kind of interesting showing like, yeah, she is one of those people that kind of like does whatever it takes as well as shows why she, you know, like ties in kind of like why she probably did those extreme methods they mentioned for trying to save that kid. Yeah, for sure. Still don't know what. <laughs> don't know what they were going for, but okay, whatever. Yeah. 50s medicine, yeah. and like 80s medicine. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> God, I keep seeing different things. Some say psychiatrist, others say, I see physician slash neurophysiologist. It's like, Damn it, Wikipedia, make up your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's Russia. Maybe they're training everything. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like honestly, like now you mentioned that the flashbacks probably are the weakest part of the movie outside the climax. Yeah. Uh, just because like, because even the shoe thing is like, they're like, I don't, I remember like recognizing the shoe she was wearing, but they didn't really have that much like narrative significance until that moment. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not quite sure what that was supposed to symbolize or what it was supposed to mean or what the, like, what the significant was. Maybe like it was her parents. I don't know. Um, but either way, it's kind of like, okay, well, that kind of just happened. And then, like, yeah, it just doesn't really hit any, it hit any particular way. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but anything else? It was interesting seeing how the main cosmonaut kind of grew his character, though. Yeah, no, he was really good. Yeah, he was, um, I liked him. <laughs> yeah, because... Um, he had a pretty good arc. <laughs> yeah, because Tatiana was, like, the main character, but um, if I can find the... Con- Constantine, I, or however they... I can't remember how they actually pronounced it, because, like, when I actually heard it, was like, oh, that's how it's pronounced. It's Constantine! <laughs> yeah, but... Um, his was a very interesting idea of moral ambiguity, because the whole thing where it's a case of... Like I said, it's, it turns out like he is not a hero. He's actually very much kind of a coward in <laughs> how he's trying to like get through everything and just like keep up an image. The whole idea of like, yeah, he kind of abandoned their, you know, left their kid at the orphanage and basically says like, I'll worry about picking up my bastard child after I'm, you know, I succeed in this space mission. Um, and the whole idea that, as you mentioned, he's actually very well aware of that this what this creature does he's basically psychically connected to it or something because he can actually see or the memory the memories of the kills that this thing makes he can actually see and perceive yeah well then it goes and that's the whole thing of hero self-sacrifice and that's what he does at the end and yada 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 so he had events at, at the end he actually does become a hero and he that's what he w- always wanted to be and even if it doesn't mean they'll get museums and they like exhibits after named after him or anything like that and, yeah so the end, he learns the true meaning of heroism. All it took was for a monster to be inside of him. 
yeah i think that's pretty much it that we can talk about then yeah um so, um, so yeah, yeah it's I still say it's worth rental. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, now I'm glad I didn't spend the 20 bucks on it. <laughs> yeah. I want to buy it, but it's a rental. Yeah. Um, so I think it's all we have for this one. This week is pretty slow in terms of new releases. I think the only one out there is the Adam Sandler movie. Um, uh, yeah. Which, to his credit, I'm told is not the worst he's ever done. He actually puts effort into it. Yeah. So who knows? It's got middling reviews. That's really good for an Adam Sandler movie. That's bad that, oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe we'll watch. If it's a demand for me, we'll watch it. I don't know. I, I got nothing else going on. <laughs> so yeah. give me stuff to do, guys. The only one we watch, leave something in the comments because I'm not saying no to anything at this point. So. <laughs> um. All right. No, Thank you guys for watching. Oh, you got any final thoughts? Um, not, not really. Just uh, glad we could finally see something a little out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At this point, we're being experimental this year. I've reviewed more documentaries this year than I have in any singular year ever. <laughs> so. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. See you later. Take it easy. <laughs>